Yeah, you guys know what time it is. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Got the Delta Force 35 on the block. Uh, gonna be ironclad in this boat out today. All right, I've got a, a, a new TFL Stinger. I've been try get, trying to get it on this boat for a while now. Finally getting around to it. All right, we've got a TFL Stinger on the boat at the moment. All right, this Stinger is designed for a catamaran. I think it's for the Cheetah or something like that. But, uh... It's, I like it because it had a 110 millimeter length and I was just curious what a long stinger would do on a mono hole. So I basically, uh, it was cheap. I got it, put it on the boat. It's been great. It's been great on 4S. It's great on 4S. Got a TP power, uh, 40, 60 in this boat and uh, it's been great on 4S. But when I throw 6S in it with a pitchy or a big prop, she wants to torque the whole stinger over okay with all the power all right so hopefully this will alleviate that problem okay um it's got an adjustable strut barrel all right it will unscrew out and in for tunability it also adjusts up and down like any old stinger all right super nice got it's pretty heavy duty looking uh super nice super nice i can't wait to get it on the boat so today we're actually going to be taking this stinger off filling in the old holes because it's got a completely different bolt pattern i'll show you guys how to do that we may have to drill out our old stuffing tube put a new stuffing tube in depending on how long it is out of the transom so i'll show you how to do that and uh yeah man yeah this is the part number if you're interested from offshore electrics 5b1132 um should be a great upgrade for this boat you guys know i like little boats and i just can't lie Yeah, let's get to it. Let's get to it. I'm going to go ahead and start removing some hardware. All right, we're going to take the cooling tubes off, take this rudder blade off, pull the linkage here, and uh, start taking the screws out for the stinger so we can remove that. All right, just kind of get, get it opened up so we'll have some room to work because uh, we need to start filling holes so we can go ahead and get this new, uh, new stinger on. All right, so let's get to it. I like to color code my wrenches, you know, I've got several boats, they all take different size spanners, so I'll put a piece of tape on, I color code them, this boat's accented in yellow, so I go yellow with this one, the 42 is orange, so I use orange tape for the 42, makes it a little bit, your life a little bit easier when you're out at the pond, searching through your box of uh, wrenches, you know. All right, so let's let's take a look at both of the struts here. All right, you can see how much beefier this strut is because mono holes they like a big prop. I mean, they they beat these things up. I I, I put a X450 on this boat, and it like I said, it just torques this strut over like it's like it's nothing. Okay, this TFL strut is super beefy. Uh, I'll have a link in the description, like I said, but check it out, man. The barrel unscrews. You can make the the strut longer. See how it's got those threads there? The barrel just will unscrew and extend. Okay, I think it's like somewhere around 85 millimeters or something. See how long it is now? Okay, they've got the the bracket, the bracing right here over the barrel to give it some support when it's fully extended. Okay. Uh, super nice design sturdy heavy duty tfl laser etched in there looks good man looks good super nice i'm loving this it's gonna be a good addition to this boat yeah man yeah All right, so I've got the, the sealant off of the boat. Kind of, I use sandpaper. Uh, I don't mind. This boat's four years old. It's not, I didn't build it for, for looks. I built it to run. I build these boats to run. So I use sandpaper to get the sealant adhesive off. Okay, I've got a drill bit that's a, like probably one size bigger than the holes I have drilled in the transom. I'm going to use my drill and drill out that adhesive and 
silicone sealant and stuff out the hole so we get a good bond when we put the epoxy in and then we're going to actually use this big drill bit to taper the holes okay on the outside I'm basically going to lightly drill it and and just kind of uh countersink the holes all right so that our, our epoxy will sit in that countersunk area you feel me so uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Come out pretty good. All right, you got them countersunk. You see that? All right, so now we've got to basically do the same thing on the inside of the boat. All right, I've got my Dremel with a stone on it. So I can basically countersink the inside holes just like the outside. That's going to basically lock that epoxy right into the hull of the boat. That way it won't crack, come out, loosen up, leak. Etc. Wipe it down really good in here with mineral spirits because I've got a rear mounted motor back here And it gets pretty dirty back back here in the back of the boat. All right, so uh, I'm gonna get to it I got it all cleaned up got it kind of reamed out countersunk and grinded out cleaned up uh, Prepping it up for the epoxy, okay um, Little note about epoxy and fiberglass, okay, so you can epoxy fiberglass no problem, okay you cannot fiberglass epoxy you feel me so if you have an epoxy boat epoxy carbon fiber boat you cannot put fiberglass on it okay if you got a fiberglass boat and you've been using epoxy to to install stuff in tubes motor mounts etc and you're repairing on top of that spot that you had the epoxy you cannot use fiberglass okay you've got to use epoxy Epoxy on epoxy, epoxy on fiberglass. Okay, you cannot use fiberglass on epoxy. It, it may stick, but it may not stick forever. You might not get a, a, the best bond, with my experience anyway. Okay, so little little word of wisdom from the wise. I've got my fiberglass hairs, and what I do is I just take ball them up into a little ball, okay, and I just kind of cut them up with scissors real fine. Okay, that's going to make like a paste, almost like a glue. All right. Wear protection when you're when you're cutting this up. Those little hairs are not good for you. Okay. Got some epoxy. That I didn't mix up too much. Just just enough. All right. I'm going to put some of it in there. Ooh, that's probably too much. But uh just to like a glue type consistency, like a gorilla glue type consistency, not nothing too thick. Just enough to run run down through those holes into the bottom on the outside of the holes i've got the boat tipped up here with masking tape over the bottom holes all right make sure it's stuck on there good and i'm just going to drizzle some epoxy with those hairs right into those holes 24 hour 209 105 okay it takes all night to dry up tomorrow we'll take the tape off and whatever didn't seep down into all the little nooks and crannies on the other side. We'll finish it off with some more mixed up epoxy and fiberglass. Okay. Uh, less is more. Less is more with something like this. You don't want to go too crazy. You're going to have to clean it up, sand it, and all that. So less is more. All right. Trust me. Yeah, something like that. Something to a consistency about like that there. That'll allow the epoxy to run down through the holes for you. You won't have a whole lot of cleanup, you know, and it should, should, you should only, we might be able to get away with just one application. So I'm going to go ahead and drizzle it in those holes. All right, so I've got my epoxy in there. Okay, I'm going to take like a little poker and push it down in those holes kind of get the air bubbles because you know when you put in a thick substance in a hole like that there will be like a little void in there okay so i'm gonna kind of pop that void pop that air bubble so that the epoxy will run in and i fill fill in hopefully it'll fill in both sides we might be able to get away with just one application if we take our time let that epoxy run down into the holes and get get in the, the outside and on the inside. We should be good. We should be good with one application. I 
I've given it a full 24 hours to cure up. We're going to pull tape. Uh, give you guys a little shot on the inside of the boat. You see those three holes down there? Perfect. Perfect. That was perfect, man. Um, we're going to get it. Get this tape off right here. Let me get everything set up. We'll get the tape off and see if we need to put another application of epoxy on the exterior of the boat. Turned out good, huh? One one application of epoxy with the little hairs in it. All right, I made sure there wasn't no air bubbles in there whenever I poured it in the, inside the boat. And I pulled the tape. Slick. All right, no sanding. Done. We, we, we kind of countersunk the inside and the outside so it's actually going to like trap that epoxy right in there we're not going to have any leaks no sanding done all right um i got my stinger right here i got my stinger here i'm going to slide that in just kind of see how it looks on the boat Ooh, that looks good oh that looks freaking mean son you see my stuffing tube it's a little short but uh it, it could possibly two millimeters two, it, it would be perfect two two more millimeters that would have been the perfect length on this stuff and two um you don't want it too long because you got to figure your your it's pivoting your barrel right here the strut uh, stinger barrel is pivoting up and down okay uh if it's too if it's too long it's going to rub that cable on the strut bushings or on the stuff and tube it's going to create some heat if it's too short, you're going to have a lot of water come in the boat. All right, so I'm kind of like in between with mine. And I don't really feel like freaking putting new stuff in tube in. Because I've put, I've put literally, I've got this boat right. All right, I've got it right. I've put literally seven stuff in tubes in this boat. All of them worked, worked great. And each time, you see how up here, all right, I started out up here. It was perfect. The boat would ride wet with the stuff in tube up higher. I slowly put another one in, I moved it down a couple millimeters, the boat would rise. I moved it down a little bit more, the boat would rise a little bit more up out of the water. I've got it perfect right now. I do not want to change my stuff into that. So, what I'm going to do, alright, just so I don't have water in the boat. That's my only concern. That's it. Alright, what I'm going to do is use a piece of silicone tube. Okay, look at the outside walls of this silicone tube. You see how thin that side is? See how thick that side is? Okay, what I did is I took a Dremel with like a pointy stone on it and I just put it in my in the in my silicone tube. I actually did it before I cut it so I could hold on to it. Alright, turned it on for 30 seconds or so until I got it where my, my cable it's not tight on my cable. Alright, it's not like cinching down on my cable causing any kind of resistance. Okay, it's like perfect size. Alright, this side's stock. Alright, so what I'm going to do is put this stock side on my stuffing tube. Alright, the thick side. Just like that. Alright. Uh, this barrel on this strut right here. Okay, it, it, it screws in and it screws out for tunability. Okay. So, you see where my barrel's at? You can see it in there. I'm going to screw it in. Okay. Make the barrel shorter. Alright. That, that little flange right there is going to butt right up against my, my silicone tube. Now, I can make my silicone tube shorter or longer. But just keep in mind, however long you make it, you need to take your Dremel, Dremel it out so it's not tight fitting on your cable especially if you got a 0.187 cable now you know if it is rubbing on the cable the cable is going to spin in it and it's going to open itself up basically all right that's no big deal but I, i'm just taking some precautions uh that that strut barrel is going to sit right on that tube okay it's going to sit right on the tube uh i can un unscrew it all right, put a longer tube in. I can screw it in. Put a shorter tube in. All that's doing is sealing up that extra large hole right there. Okay, just kind of keeping some water out. All right, because you got to figure this, the stinger is going to be sitting right there just above the bottom of my rod pad. All right, don't want it to be down lower than the rod pad. You want it up higher. Okay, I'm talking about like even just a fraction of a millimeter higher than the bottom of your rod pad you're in good shape okay uh 
if it's lower, it's going to catch, that right there is basically going to act like a scoop. Scoop water up and force it right into your freaking strut, right into your stuffing tube. Alright, so I'm basically using this silicone tube to prevent excess, excessive water getting into my strut. Okay. Loctite fun tack. I use this stuff all the freaking time. It's blue sticky putty you use to hang pictures with. All right, double side tape that works good too. Uh, I'm not gonna waste my double side tape because I got this freaking expensive stuff. So what I do is I just take a little bit of this fun tack. It don't even take much. Okay, boom. Put it on the back of my stinger. All right. Make sure my, my stinger's lined up with the stuffing tube. That's what the silicone tubes were for. Alright, now we can stick this stinger right on the, on the stern of the boat, on the transom of the boat here, and mark out our holes without having to worry about this thing moving back and forth. Okay, just push it on there. Alright, that's going to let you do all your alignments, all your hole marking, okay, with a pencil or whatever. It's going to let you let you get the holes marked out perfect all right so i'm gonna get everything marked out quit jacking my jaws i'll see you in a minute like i said i probably should install a different stuffing tube but i've got this one where i want it and to be quite honest with you i'm curious if that silicone uh tube will prevent water from entering the boat all right that that's just me i like doing stuff like that uh just testing things you know that way i can tell you guys if it works or not if you're having an issue with water entering your boat through your stinger uh same type scenario right here you know i can say hey look put a freaking silicone uh tube on it boom you're done simple fix you ain't got to pull the stuff into so that's my thoughts behind it uh that's why and i'm um yeah, well, I got a lot of projects and I'm kind of being freaking lazy. <laughs> this boat, man, I built this boat. I love this boat, all right? And it's basically my favorite boat out of every one of my boats. Like, I'm not even kidding. This is my favorite boat. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and get it installed. I'm using Loctite Marine Adhesive for the actual base of the Stinger. All right, Loctite Marine Adhesive. Uh, boom, that's going to seal everything up. Lock tighten the screws. Boom. Flex driver. Included hardware. I'll see you when I'm done. Alright, so I've got the strut all apart. Okay, I was wrong. I was wrong. It's got more than five points of contact. Okay, you've got one, two three four five six seven end of strut base all right it's got seven points of contact on this tfl strut all right that thing's ironclad son i've got my my, my tube in all right i'm gonna go ahead and install the strut okay i'm just gonna slide this in to the base all right throw all one two three four five screws in boom we're done all right it's ironclad okay it's freaking ironclad all right um i'm gonna push i'm gonna push my 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 flex cable all the way up into my collet all right let me get a measurement here for you guys um i've got my silicone tube on the stuffing tube uh it's it's barely touching my my flex cable all right I've got my barrel pushed down, like screwed into that silicone tube. So the silicone tube don't back off. That's just basically going to keep water out the boat. That is it, okay? Um, let me get a measurement here for you guys. With the silicone tube in, it is 83 millimeters, okay? Basically to my drive dog, all right? So now I've got to cut my cable because I've basically taken an inch, an inch off of this cable. Okay, an inch off the cable here. So um, you see where my drive dog was? All right, now you see where it is now. So I'm basically taking a full inch off my cable. All right, um, and what I do for that is I basically measure from the end of my, my stinger barrel to where my, my keyway is for my drive dog. All right, that's, um, 
No, that's not right. All right, let me zero it out. That's basically... Twenty-seven millimeters. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out. All right, and now I'm gonna measure twenty-seven millimeters on the other end of my flex cable. I'm gonna make a mark, and that's basically where I'm gonna cut my flex cable. I guess I've showed you guys this before. This is a socket, a big socket. Okay, if it's like a flathead socket that i have i got like several of them that i never use i got filled with a wood solder okay all you need is and i've had that solder in there I, i've done like 10 cables with this thing okay um clean up your cable i've already cleaned mine up with alcohol all right then you dip it dip it in the flux all right get your blowtorch heat that flux up Heat up your heat up your socket until that solder is liquefied. Okay. And then we're gonna dip it, wipe it off, dip it, wipe it off, dip, dip, wipe it off, dip, dip, wipe it off. Okay, repeat. <laughs> if you put too much solder, if you put too much solder on your cable, okay, heat the cable up. Boom. All right, heat it up till the solder liquefies and then wipe it off. All right, if you got too much solder on here, it'll throw the cable out of balance. All right, that's just going to keep your, your cable, um, it's going to make your cable last a lot longer when you when you solder the ends of it. All right, I would recommend doing that to ready to runs, boats you build, new cables, etc. All right, so let's throw this thing in the boat. Going in the collet, boom, perfect. Look at that, perfect. All right, so uh, so now I'm gonna put my rudder on. This is a offshore electrics rudder. Okay, um, I love this rudder. This is probably the rudder I'm gonna put on the Sonic Wake. All right, it's real wide. It it it, it it'll, it'll your boat will go where you want it to go with this freaking rudder. I've done some modifications. All right, I've drilled out the holes for my cooling, both of them to the extreme. Okay, you could you could see it, you could feel it on there where I wallered it out with a drill bit. Um, I actually took some aluminum weld, cleaned up the rudder, and aluminum welded some little cups on there. All right, they're very low profile, very low profile. Um, the water actually just kind of it don't even I don't even, it, it's going to create a little bit of drag, but not much. All right. Um, I've got it cut down so it's like super low profile, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this guy on, all right? And hook up the coolant, the steering linkage, and we're done. Boom! Ha! Huh? Boom! Yeah, we got it on there. That looks freaking mean, okay? I got my drive dog on. I got it all greased up. I got my rudder on the boat. The coolant's run. Rudder linkages run. Got six S in it. All right, let's see what it sounds like. Ooh, that sounds good. That sounds good. It looks good. It looks mean on the boat, okay? That's bad to the bone. I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to quit jacking my jaws. But that's how you change a stinger out, all right? That's how you put a TFL stinger on the boat. That thing's nice. It's tough. It's rigid. It looks good. Um... That's how you fill in holes on an RC boat. Old holes, all right? Simple, simple, simple way. I'm going to let you go. Big B here with Ironclad RC, a channel where we tinker, test, and tune everything RC. We'll see you guys next time, all right? Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Running video, running videos coming up soon. We'll see you later, all right? We'll see you next time. Big B with Ironclad RC.